Okay, well, I'm here with Robert Vukert, PhD, the founder of the Alliance for Natural Health and uh, also the co-formula for New Zest products. Well, yeah, I, we're here, and I want to welcome you to uh, Powered by New Zest, Rob. Fantastic to be here. I'll just correct one thing. I'm not a co-formula. I'm a co-formulator. <laughs> but is that just... Did a, I say co-formula? I believe you did. I think I even told someone before this um, recording that I was going to grammatically screw up at least two or three times. So there we go. That's number one. A, Check. Yeah, yeah, it's a Kiwi oversight. It is. <laughs> well, that, thank God you're here to educate me, uh, Rob. And so, and tonight, and you've been doing some fascinating stuff over the last 35 years in the area of food, um, natural health, and a whole bunch of other arenas. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, um, sustainability. Is sustainability. Really, that's that's yeah. another long word. That's right. But we'll try and keep the words short today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it, it really is what has hung all of the work I've done over the last 35 years together. Yeah. Um, essentially, you know, we, we have a problem in the world generally in terms of providing enough food, keeping people healthy, dealing with limited resources on the planet, having enough energy. Mm. And um, you know, if you look at all the great solutions that we've come up with you know in terms of energy or issues with with the environment we look to work with nature mm. rather than against it and um, over the last 15 years of my life I've been working particularly with healthcare and one of the interesting things is we've kind of bought into a system that actually relies on new to nature molecules we call them pharmaceuticals or drugs, yep. that actually often work against nature. Many of them have started off being similar to nature, around about 75% of all drugs have their origins in plant compounds, but then they get modified, they get patented, and of course we see now the problem with drug side effects. So um, really what we're trying to do is reconnect people with nature. So the, the work we do in Alliance for Natural Health is very centrally involved with that. It's scientific, it's advocacy, it's education. Yes. So and you really are sort of the epitome of uh, preventing illness and you know, treating it naturally versus fixing it with drugs. Yeah, we need to right. see a sea change. You know, we need to move away from this idea of the, the doctor being the god that people live their lives any old how, mm -hmm. wait until they become diseased and then look for a, a pill some kind of magic silver bullet late in life, yes. we can turn the situation around. The sustainable solution in healthcare is where the individual is empowered with the right kind of information, controls their own destiny, and uses a range of practitioners, but that includes not people just in the healthcare space, but also in the fitness space, to guide them. So it really becomes the, the, the practitioner as a guide rather than as a god. Yes, and, and, and talking about magic bullets and sort of the, the, I guess, our constant um, desire to be able to, to find a quick answer to, to issues. We wanted to talk today about um, ketones, exogenous ketones, this... this so that was a big word. It was a big word. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, but, but really the buzz that's around this whole um, trend, if you like, that sort of started around 2014, or the, the first supplement, I think, came on the market around that time, um, that you know, people are looking to get into some sort of nutritional ketosis, um, and you know they're, they're trying to shortcut that process somehow. Then I wanted you to maybe talk a little bit about the whole you know world of ketosis and. Well, let's let's yes. turn it around. Let me ask you a question. Please, you, you, yeah. you're involved in the in the supplement industry as well. I am. Why do you think people are interested in exogenous ketones? What's happening? Well, I think people are looking for a way to get healthy and slim. I think it's as simple as that. It's, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I do think it, it is part of the obesity epidemic. Yeah. It is also a part of the quick fix that everyone wants. So people have heard that getting into ketosis mm. is a good way of losing weight. Yeah. And people want to do it quickly. And, you know, I don't want to say anything too negative about exogenous ketones, mm. but these are the ketone supplements. There's a whole bunch of research being done on ketosis as well. Mm. Um, and um, obviously there's a lot of buzz around the ketogenic diet. Yes. And, and of course, all of these things mean different things to different people. You know, the, the ketogenic diet research is really about people with epilepsy or brain cancer. And what we're really gonna be talking about today, I think, 
is what people are trying to, they're trying to use ketosis in order to get healthier and to lose weight in a healthy way and to keep that weight off. And I think there are some very real ways of doing it. My natural tendency, if you look at all of the available evidence, plus what actually happens to people who engage in this, is doing it the natural way mm. is the best way. Yeah, and of and course, say more about that, what's the natural way? Well, the natural, let, let, let's look at the other side of it first okay. of all. Okay, so you, you want a quick fix. You've heard that ketosis is, is good for, for weight loss. And you know, what is ketosis? It is raising the level of ketone bodies, three particular compounds, mm. acetone that is like the very volatile gas that um, s smells of the, the, the sweets pear drops mm. and it comes out you know, in your breath. Um, acetoacetic acid and the big one, BHB, beta hydroxybutyrate. And essentially what happens is if you go into starvation, you start producing elevated levels from the fat cells in your liver mm. of these ketone bodies. And your brain loves them. Mm. Um, they also bypass the whole energy system. So we're very used to, if we think about energy, we normally think about carbs feeding into the Krebs cycle, which is the key cycle that generates energy in the mitochondria, which is the organelles within our cells that produce energy. They're yes. energy factories in our cells, and we have a, lots of them in our muscles, but we have them really in all the cells of our body. And um, what ketone bodies do is produce energy without you using carbohydrate. Right. And of course, the obesity epidemic that we have is essentially a disease of excessive refined carbohydrate and not enough activity combined with a whole range of endocrine hormonal dysregulation that occurs because we've moved such a long way from our evolutionary norm. So the kind of ketosis that we think about for health reasons is about um, generating a low level of these ketone bodies in our in our um, bloodstreams that allows us to use energy without having to eat. And when we do that, guess what we do? We burn a lot of fat. Yes. And if you keep eating carbs all the time, you literally switch off that ability to burn fat. So this is this is really one of the reasons that, that people, you know. Which is not a problem if you're if you're not taking in too many carbs. You're not taking in too much energy or you're 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 burning more than you're taking in, then you know it's not an issue necessarily. Exactly. We, we're, we're much better adapted to famine because famine is what kills you. Now people right. get a bit touchy about the idea of ketosis because they know it's also what happens to you when you die from starvation. Yes. But the level of ketosis, the level of ketone bodies you produce in your bloodstream is you know, 10, 20, 30 times higher. Yes. So this low level of ketosis, we call it nutritional ketosis, we regard it as a completely normal state that anyone who eats a bit less, and that has a fancy name in itself, caloric restriction. I mean, why we call it caloric restriction, but it's because we eat too much. Right. And we also talk about intermittent fasting, yes. as if we were eating all of the time, which is of course what a lot of people do. A lot of people have three main meals, coupled with snacks in between, and each time they do that, they're taking in carbohydrate. Mm. Now, why would the body bother burning fat no. if you keep on putting carbohydrate into the system? So one of the key things, if you want to get into nutritional ketosis, is you need to obviously have elevated ketones that you can use for energy. But if you're going to do it naturally, you need to be on a low carb diet. You need to have big periods of time when you're not eating, which means 12, 14, 16 hour overnight fast. Um, you can also accelerate it by, um, for example, exercising in a fasted state, often doing that two or three times a week. Okay, well, I've got a couple of questions for you. So if, at what point, at what hours after I've stopped eating, how many hours to, till I go into ketosis? Well, look, have you, have you, you've been engaging with well, some of this as well, yeah, absolutely. As, as I have. So we, look, we talk as two people who are actually doing it. We do, we talk yeah. as those two people, yes. And I, I mean, I've lost a, a load of weight in the last sort of year, and I, it was really restricting calories. It wasn't anything fancy, but what made it um, doable was that I stopped, you know, I, I started playing around with intermittent fasting. And I have no idea whether I went into ketosis or whether I just delayed eating, <laughs> you know, breakfast and then, you know, was able to enjoy more for dinner, lunch, dinner, you know. 
but what that's the question I guess is what what was I in ketosis if I did, if I was in you know wasn't eating for 16 hours the, many people will move into ketosis. Now you will know if you haven't eaten for 16 hours, particularly if you exercise, yes. and you don't Which get, I was definitely doing those. Yeah, and if you don't get a blood sugar fasting. crash, if you don't yeah. go into a hyperglycemic phase, right. you are doing pretty well. Right. That means your body is switching to, to burning fats, probably. But there is another risk. Right. Your body might move to burning protein. And if you're burning protein, you're burning muscle. Yeah. So, you know, a, a lot of people get into weight loss programs, they put themselves on a weighing machine and they say, wow, I'm losing all this weight. Now, unless you're using body composition scales, BIA, mm. you don't know, are you actually losing water, losing muscle? And of course, if you do that, you're not actually burning fat. Mm. So, um, if, if you how do, I prevent, with, how do I prevent that over this? Well, Oh. One, of, one of the best ways to do it is making sure you first of all taking a lot of exercise. Right. So, so this is one of the, one of the ways of one of the reasons that faster training is so important. Mm. The next thing to do when you finish training, mm. you have to put in food, but you've got to put in low carb food. Right. And um, one of the fantastic things about clean lean protein, particularly when it's coupled with good green stuff, you you know uh, I think you, you call it something different. We, in, the in the States we have a product called Quick Fighter Kick, but no problem, yes. Okay, well yeah. it's still still very low carb, I yes. think it's uh, it's no more than about three grams of, of carb per serving. So you, yeah. you know, in general terms, you need to keep your um, overall energy intake from carbs in a day to stay in nutritional ketosis okay. um, to probably somewhere around the 5% level, 5 to 10% level. Um, the bottom line is you also can put yourself, particularly when you're training, into a degree of oxidative stress. If you take a lot of exercise, your body's producing free radicals. These things are damaging. They're, however, very good for us. You know, nature is full of this kind of positives and net negatives, yins and yangs put together. So the stress of exercise is good for us on the condition mm. that we have the resources in our body to be able to repair our system to quench these free radicals. Right. So a combination of putting in the protein from the clean lean protein that is completely anti-inflammatory, it's a hyperallergenic source. You know, many of the dairy proteins are, are you know, they've got one of the 14 key allergens, mm. you know, that, that we, frequently otherwise consume. Right. But if you couple that together with the wide range of botanicals in quick vita cake or, or good or green, green stuff, right. you, you really have a very special combination. Yeah. Now coming back to, well I mean, fantastic, it sounds like there's a natural way to do this and but I want to come back to this whole business of the exogenous ketones because as you said you're not allowed to be negative about it but let's just have a frank conversation about the utility of it. You know, are they all there purported to be or you know, you know suggested the, the, to be? There's a, there's a lot of research going on on ketone esters. Okay, so ketone esters are more stable. Um, they're not really widely available at all to the general community because they taste filthy. Right. Very, very difficult to disguise the flavor of them. Um, but they have a more pronounced effect in terms of accelerating the BHB levels in the bloodstream. Mm. Um, so the bottom line is that people buy them very often because they hear there is a, another shortcut. Mm. And the shortcut is you don't need to get onto a low carb diet, you don't need to intermittent fast, just take these things. Now, what we really don't know is what happens when in the long term to disease patterns in general, if you have elevated blood sugar coupled with ketone with, with bodies. high ketone bodies. Mm. Because in nature that there's just no studies on it so far. No, there's, there's, no. there's been no research. And we've got we've got many, many examples of this kind of interference with a natural process. Mm. High ketone bodies always occur with low blood sugar in nature. So I am concerned as a, as a scientist, as a researcher, about the possible conflict. And I think it may be many years um, before we really find the answers. Bottom line is, we know it works if you do it the natural way. Yeah. It's really helpful if you do have some products that support it. I've done it myself. I've lost 25 kilograms in, in the process. Yeah. So you know, we've both done it. We've seen hundreds of other people do it. But you know, having protein coupled with a botanical mix that, that quenches free radicals, provides nutrients that might otherwise be missing in the diet. Really, really important. That's awesome. Well, look, we're going to finish in a minute and I'm going to ask you just to maybe summarize everything 
But I got one more question for you, and that is, you, you talked about burning muscle, and I think I asked you something about it, and but I want to ask you another one, which is, look, I've, I've heard a doctor say um, uh, that why would the body switch to burning muscle when there's fat stores available? It doesn't make sense from an evolutionary perspective. The fat stores are there to be used when we run out, when we burn through the, the is it the glycogen and the you know the yep. available uh, glucose or carbohydrates to be turned into energy. So, what? Tell, tell me about that. You know, what? Yeah. So, just starting from the end and working backwards, mm. you know, glycogen mm. is stored glucose, and we we, we store about 500 grams of it between our liver and our skeletal muscle. Mm. So if we're going to burn that, we need to generally exercise, be active for at least 90 minutes or so mm. before we can actually get rid of it so we can start burning fat. Right. So the, the bottom line, often when you're looking at, um, it, it's one of the reasons I'm such a supporter for bicycles, by the way, because it's one of the few yes. forms of exercise that you can use where it's easy to spend more than 90 minutes. A little plug for so cycling. Yeah, of yeah. course, a, a big plug for <laughs> cycling. Um, the second aspect of it is that in order to burn fat, you need to go through a process of beta oxidation. And literally, it's one of these many systems in the body, if you don't use it, the body forgets how to do it. So if you are a regular carb consumer, we often think of people like this as carb junkies, and that represents right. a very large section of society. These people, their, their metabolism forgets how to burn so, fat. Properly. So this is this business of being fat adapted. Yes, yeah. this is what when people talk about getting adapted to burning fat, ad yeah. adapted to burning ketones. And if the body's not used to doing that, it's liable to grab some protein as it's sort of clunking around. Yeah. It's a very scientific uh, term. Exactly. Uh, to, towards you know then and maybe then it stumbles onto burning the fat. But this but it, but it's not. You're not fat adapted. You're lot. You're you're it's, in it's, danger of burning muscle. Exactly. Right? It's a, it's a process that happens at different rates for different people. Right. The, the, the key is to stretch the time between meals. Uh -huh. um, the so other what, start key, off slowly? Yeah, to start right. off slowly. One of the very first things to do is to have at least a five hour gap between meals and not snack. So, you know, the, the, the snack often comes in as a mechanism to provide more carbohydrates, easy burn, dirty burn fuels, basically. Um, and then slowly start extending those time intervals, start introducing more exercise, particularly in a fasted state. Um, think about not having breakfast. You know, we bought the line from Kellogg's that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. For many adults, particularly people who have slow metabolism, the very best thing they can do is not have breakfast. Not have breakfast. And then you can actually train in the morning and then when you finish training, immediately put in some protein and you know greens. Well, I think that's probably an excellent summary for what we're wanting to, to end on today. So, Robert Fikirk, PhD, thank you for joining us on Powered by Newsest. Johnny, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Great, thanks. thanks for coming.